Okay, tomorrow we have a quiz. There are four problems. The first three are just like just like parametric one. And then the, the fourth problem is you have to be able to write the equation of a line. I showed you that yesterday, right? Write the equation of a line in, in three dimensions. And then find where it intersects. Did we do where it intersects the plane? No, because we ran out of time yesterday. Okay, well, make sure we do it today. In fact, what about last night's homework? Was it on that? Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, and don't forget, we got to go over that um, triple angle thing, because who knows when I see that tomorrow. Okay, so first of all, why don't we do that first? Okay, now what about H? Did we do H in this class? No. Okay, the other two classes, we did H this one. Oh! Good thing, because this might be in tomorrow's quiz. H. Okay, so we're on parametric one, H. X equals 2 over 1 plus P squared. Anyway, if you get stuck, you don't know what to do. How many people got it, first of all? Two people. Well, how did you do it? Four people. How did you guys get it? Good thinking. What about Hanoka? How do you get it? Solve the T squared in the first equation. Yeah, but then what do you plug in for T? Going to be plus or minus a radical thingy then, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it comes out, OK? What about Chai? Quark did it that way, too. Who's like Hanoka? Oh, that Guinto was the clever one there. Now, this technique I'm going to show you only works in certain situations. It only, do you notice that the two equations kind of look alike? Except this one got an extra t. So Gwinto said she just divided y over x. Yeah, that's a good one, I like that. Okay, well, which is the same thing as the technique anyway. Since this equation is t times that equation, then you can just write y equal t times x there, right? If I multiply the x equation by t, you will get the y equation which is the same thing as saying t equals y over x. And that's what Quinto did. She went y over x equals that over that, which is just simply t. And then you take this, and you can plug it back into either one of these. Which one looks easier? Probably the first equation, because it's got less stuff, yeah? So if you take that and plug it in there, you will get x plus 2 over 1 plus, this is equal for x equals 2 over 1 plus t squared, which is y squared over x squared. And there you go. That's a rectangular equation. Except that equation is not in a form that we know. Do you guys even know what the graph is just by looking at it like that? No, so we got to like change it into something we can recognize, right? So first step, cross multiply. This is like over 1, so cross multiply. x plus y squared over x equals 2. How do I get rid of the fraction? Multiply through by x, and now we can see this is a circle. And if you want to find the center, you can put all the x's together, leave a space, you're completing the square here. What do I have to add to make a perfect square? One, so you add one to both sides. So you get x minus one squared plus y squared equals one. All that work for two points? Well, maybe it might be three tomorrow. Yeah, but tomorrow is only going to be worth five points. So if you get that, that is only two points. Just draw the graph. So this is a circle, center at one, zero, and the radius is one, so it looks like this. Draw it in the dotted line. Okay, now, how does the particle move on the circle? So what you do is you go back to the original equations, and what is the time interval here? T is greater than or equal to zero. Well, that one's kind of easy, to just plug in zero, one, two, three. Probably that would be enough. Okay, plug in zero for T, what do you get? Two, zero. So tomorrow on your graph, you have to indicate how the park was traveling. So just do what we've been doing. Just put t equals zero there. That's good enough. OK, plug in one. You cannot even plug in one. One, one. So the park was here one second later. Oh, so it's just going around counterclockwise then, uniform circular motion again. Now it moves to that. So plug in two. Two fifths, 
four fifths. That would be over here. Oh, the thing's slowing down, the safari flow. Because it traveled from there to there in one second, and then, then there to there in another second, so it's slowing down. Okay, plug in three. Yeah, just go two tenths, six tenths. Oh, man, the thing is slowing down even further. What happens when you plug in four? Just for funsies. Two seventeenths, eight seventeenths. Oh, the thing is slowing down. So this is what's happening. The particle starts here, goes like this. <laughs> so what's happening is it's getting closer and closer to the origin, but it's never going to get there because it opens the flow. How come it never hits the origin? It's just going to get closer and closer. Why, why is it never going to reach there? Because think about it. If you plug in bigger and bigger numbers for t, right, like if what happens when you plug in a billion for t? You get 2 over 1 plus a billion squared. That's very close to 0, but is it 0? No. And same thing with x, right? And we learned this in the second quarter. When you have a rational function, what happens when the degree of the bottom is bigger than the top? What did we learn? The horizontal asymptote then is? y equals zero. So that's why as t gets bigger and bigger and bigger in both of these, they both get closer and closer to zero, but it's not going to touch because it's asymptotic. Well, okay, I can tell we don't like that one. Did we do i yesterday? Okay, and then j. You know what, I should write this on the board, triple angle identity. I'm, I'm, we already derived this in the second quarter this way. So here, if you have sine 3x, if you want, did you guys, I told you guys how to start it, right? Sine 2x plus x. Then you expand it, sine of the first, cosine of the second, plus cosine of the first, sine of the second. This will save time in the other classes. And then you got to use double angle identities. This is 2 sine x cosine x times cosine x plus, which, okay, which of the three identities am I going to use for this one? 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Because we're trying to change everything to sine x to, because, well, sine t rather, because x equals sine t. And then you got 2 sine x cosine squared x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x. And if I want to change everything to sine, what do I do with this? Substitute 1 minus sine squared x. And then you get 2 sine x minus 2 sine cubed x plus sine x minus 2 sine cubed x, and that all simplifies to 3 sine x minus 4 sine cubed x. Woo! That's the triple angle identity. Of course, that thing people, we just know that already, right? The rest of us could derive it, got to reinvent the wheel. Okay, sine 3t. So using the identity we just derived again is 3 sine t minus 4 sine cubed t. Oh, but x is sine t. So substituting it back in, you get 3 equal, I mean y equals 3x minus 4x cubed. Yowza! Okay, you get two points for that. Now you gotta draw the graph. Now, how do you graph this? How the heck is this graph? This is a polynomial, people. What degree polynomial is it? It's degree three, it's odd, so it's either gonna be like this or like this, right? End behavior, which one is it? The leading coefficient is negative, so it, is it A or B? It's B, so the end behavior is like this. You, have you guys forgotten the dance of the polynomial? <laughs> so how do you graph this? What, what's the first thing you should look for? It rhymes with met intersects. So you factor it, oh my goodness. What is going on? Okay, so here we go. We are drawing the graph now. So looking at this, the x-intercepts are 0 and plus or minus 3 over 2, which is about 0.866. Yeah. Come on, why are you guys laughing? Look, 
does everybody see the x intercept for, for this one is 0 and then plus or minus root 3 fourths, which is root 3 over 2. But come on, everybody knows root 3 is approximately 1.732, right? So if you divide both sides by 2, you can get 0.866, duh. Anyway, it's like this. As long as it's somewhere over here, it's good enough. So here we go. Okay, now, drawing that graph is not good enough. You've got to tell me how the particle travels on this graph. So what's the time interval 0 to 2 pi? So go back to your original equations and plug in. If I were me, I would just plug in the quadrato angles. That would probably be good enough. Okay, plug in 0. Go. 0, 0. So 2, 0 there. Okay, plug in pi over 2. 1, negative 1. You're right. So it's down here. Oh, so the particle goes like this then. It goes, and then just gonna keep on going down. No moves forever. Plug in pi. Oh, it goes back to zero, zero. Whoa. Plug in three pi over two. Negative one, one. So then it goes up here. So this is three pi over two. And then what happens when you go plug in two pi? Zero, zero again. So the particle starts here, goes like this, boing, doing, and then if you keep on going, you just keep doing, 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 doing. But we're not keep going; it just goes from zero to two pi. So tomorrow, that's what you gotta do. You gotta show, indicate on the graph. See if you put like the values of t on there, that's good enough. You don't have to write a paragraph. Okay, let's move on to parametric two. Three, four, six. Are you serious? Okay, number four, I think you'll see that. Well, I guess we're doing it then. I thought you guys said we did it yesterday. Okay, you know what's gonna throw some of, hold you guys, some of you back? I, 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 I sense it already. We have graphing issues, and we have trig issues. So you gotta, we gotta stop that. Do we need another speed quiz? <laughs> what do you mean, no? That's gonna raise your grade, unless it lowers it. Three equals three minus five three. Okay, so how do I know this is a line? Because if the formulas are linear here, it's gotta be a line, right? We learned that yesterday, yeah? And then, at what points does the particle intersect the spheres? So x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 6. So we have a sphere like this. This is a sphere. And then we have a line. So it goes like this. Punctures it and then goes through. And it comes out of it. So at what point does this line intersect the sphere? So you could have two answers, right? This could puncture it over there. Or it could, have, could be tangent. could have one answer. Or so how do you solve this kind of problem? Yeah, all you gotta do is substitute inside there. It's like, come on. X is this, so substitute it in. Then substitute this thing for Y. And then substitute this thing for Z. And then solve this equation. There's only one variable in it, right? So you gotta do algebra here. So FOIL, FOIL, FOIL. I don't like to use FOIL, but I am. 1 minus 4T plus 4T squared. 4 minus 12t plus 9t squared, 9 minus 30t plus 25t squared. See, this is what my algebra teacher taught me when I was in eighth grade, it came into me. You line them up like this, a lot of like terms are like that. So you get, what is that? 38t squared minus 46t plus 14, but you got a minus the 6 plus 8 equals 0, divide by 2, because you want the number smaller, and pray that it's factorable. Otherwise, you've got to use the quadratic formula. But come on, would I do that to you? No, I wouldn't, unless I do. Minus, minus. So t equals 1 and 4 19ths. Box said that's the answer. No, you have to find the points where it intersects. So 
you have to take, these are like the time values, right? You take that and plug it back into here. I'll do one then. So if you plug in one, you get one minus two. So negative one, plug in one there, you get negative one, plug in one there, you get negative two. And then you take four nineteenths and then plug it in. <laughs> I'll let you do that one. How about just copy the answer on the bottom? That's what you guys are going to do, yeah? And then what's going to happen on the quiz tomorrow? Pain, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so there are two points of intersections. It's quite easy. You just got to plug it in. Okay, now in this problem, you have to write these equations like I tried to teach you yesterday. Okay, you got two points. Two, three, five, and then eight. This is the same picture I drew yesterday. You got a line going through these two points. Where does it intersect the plane? Didn't I draw this picture yesterday? Like, what are the coordinates of that point right there? So, what are the two things you need to write an equation of a line in space? You need a point, which we have. And it doesn't matter which point you use. Well, which point would you use? The one with the smaller numbers. I remember I gave a problem last year. My God, I gave one nice one and one ugly one. So many people using the ugly one. It's crazy. And then we need a vector. What vector points in the direction of the line? Six. Head minus tail. Six. Head minus 12. Negative 20. Head minus tail. Negative 8. Now, this vector points in the direction of the plane, but then notice that all the numbers are divided by 2. So can I do this? If this vector points in the direction of the line, then half of it, what about half that vector? Is that also pointing in the direction of the line? Wait, let me look. Yes! So why not use this one because the numbers are smaller? So how do you write the equation of this line? You said we're going to use this point and this vector. So what is it? 2 plus 3t, y equals 3 minus 10t. And then z equals 5 minus 4t. Now let's just, and then of course, what we're going to do now is plug in these three things into the equation of the plane, which is 4x plus 3y plus 2z equal 1. So plug in 4 times x, which is this. See, this is the same as the last problem. 3 times y, which is this. And then 2 times z, which is this. Set that equal to 1 and solve it. So multiply out like a bad dog. 8 plus 12t. 9 minus 30t. 10 minus 8t. What does that come out to? Negative 26t plus 27 equals 1. 26t equals 26. t equals 1. So if t equals 1, plug it in here. What do you get? Plug in 1. If you can't plug in 1, go home. 5. OK. No, no, let, just let me do it. 5, negative 7, 1. Now, Carol, I just want to show you this. Because I don't want to see people doing this on the test like it's like 12 people. Left. OK, what if I use this point and this vector? Then you're going to get x equals 8 plus 60. y equals negative 7 minus 23. z equals negative 3 minus 18. Now, what happens when you take these and plug it in here? It's, it's really not that bad. But what if there were squares on them? Would you rather square these or those? Oh, since you guys think you're better than last year, what about the cubes on them? Would you rather cube these or those? That's why you want the numbers to be as small as possible, right? Doesn't that just make sense? Okay, don't answer me. And then number six. Wait a minute. You guys could do five but not six? Are you serial? Are you serious? I can't believe that. Everybody do number five.
Then why is it five on the board? We can put it up here. Okay. But then, why I why is six up there but not five? Since they're both the same kind of problem. Okay, you have to graph this on your calculator. And then please show it on your homework, otherwise you're gonna get like points off for each one. Right? You gotta show it. Now these are two very famous graphs in mathematics. Okay? The first one, number five, is this. This is called the cycloid. So if you're a math aficionado, you heard of the cycloid, right? The cycloid. That's what you get when you take, okay, you have a circle, and then you have a point on the circle. What if I roll the circle on the line without slipping? That's a phrase from physics, right? Without slipping. If I roll this thing here, what is the path traced out by that point there? Roll it. Roll this. Is this the now of that? Yeah. Any other foolish questions? Okay, there. You see this? This is a circle. Imagine this a circle. You see how I put a box out there for the point? I put this point there 15 years ago, I think. And then what if I roll it without slipping? You guys know what without slipping, right? Roll it on a line, then the path traced out by that point right there. It's gonna be a cycle. Let me see if I can get it better. Oh, maybe I can roll it on the here. Watch me. Okay, watch this point now. Roll. Grab it on your calculator, you should see something like this. 0 to 2 pi will give you 1. How, how, how far apart do you have to grab? To 6 pi. Oh, okay, I just did it for you. You can have 3 of them then, right? Anyway, why is the cycloid so important? You guys in physics, impress me. If you take one arch of the cycloid and turn it upside down. Okay, what if your physics teacher told you, okay, we're going to design something for Okay, we're going to have a contest. We're going to put a marble up. You can design any, any, any shape you want. We're going to take a marble. We're going to just drop it right there. The, the marble that gets there the fastest is the winner. It's a $10,000 prize. What shape should you build it? Should it just make a straight ramp like that? Just make, make a board? You probably guess what it is. No, you make it as an inverted cycloid. Because look, at the beginning, the thing is like dropping almost vertical, right? So it goes, woo. This is the path of, of, bet, of the, that'll get you there the fastest, from there to there. This is something good to know, you guys, in physics. Do not build a straight ramp, because at the beginning, see the thing is just going to go slow, then it speeds up, right? But if you got the drop like this, whoosh. Upside down cycloid. Now here, here's the question, physics people. Okay, what if I put one marble over here, and then I put another marble over there? If I both, if I let them release them at the same time, which one gets to there the fastest? They get there at the same time. That's the beauty of the cycloid. This is all mathematically proven already. And it doesn't matter, you can put it here. Okay? Release the marbles. See? Same time. Come on, it's like you never heard of this before. We heard that in kindergarten. When was it first grade? It was so long ago, I don't even remember. It was 40 something years ago. Yeah. Does the size of a marble uh, make a difference? No. No, any marble. Yeah, but then they gotta be the same marble. You know what I mean? You gotta have like the oh, same mass yeah, yeah. if they wanna get there at the same time. Okay, and that's number five. Because, okay, I'm telling you right now, you might think, oh, this is interesting, okay, but wait till you see the test. You're gonna have to know this about the cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And then, 
and then number six. Okay, so you have to graph this. This is another famous graph in mathematics. Now, I hope you know that cosine cubed t means cosine t quantity cubed, right? Because that's the way you're going to have to punch it in on your calculator, yeah? y equals 2 sine cubed t, which is this. So that's the way you would punch it in on your calculator, except you've got to put parentheses around that. Okay, and 0 to 2 pi zoom this one. This is the path traced up by a point on a circle of radius half that rolls without slipping inside another circle of radius 2. Okay, so let's say that the radius of this circle is a half. Okay, so we, we need to have a circle of radius 2, which is what? How many times this one? If this is a half, what do I have to do to a half to get 2? Multiply by 4. So we need four. Uh, two, four. Yeah. So. I'm a little bit off here. Okay, now, if I take this thing right here, put it here, and I'm going to roll it on the inside of the circle like this. Roll it on the inside like this. Does this remind you of something? Look at the point right there. Are you watching the point? Don't watch my hand though. Watch I can't do it exactly. Because, oh, it's slipping right there. Anyway, the path, did you see? The path traced out some, looks something like this, yeah? You know what this is called? Hypocycloid of four cusps. You guys know what a cusp is? Edge. Right there. What? Edge. <laughs> no, this is something from geometry. A cusp. Cusp. It has four cusps. You guys ever did spirograph? You ever heard of that toy? Spirograph? One person knows spirograph. Come on, that's like one of the best Christmas presents ever. No, I'm serious. Okay, you get this. Okay, you get this thing. It has it's basically all these gears and things like that. Okay, and then so it kind of looks like this. And then what you do is you pin it on the board, right? And you have paper. And then you get a smaller one like this, and it has all these different holes in it. And it has all these gears so they match up. Then you take they have all these colored pens. You take the pen and then you just roll it on the inside of the thing. It goes like. Oh, oh, oh. And then you pick another puka, you put a different colored pen in there, it goes, oh, 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 oh. and it makes all these nice designs. Two people know Spirecraft, though. The rest of you, what? Video game. <laughs> game Boy. <laughs> okay, anyway, this is a famous graph. Did you guys get did, did you guys even do this on your calculator? If you, if you want to do it on the iPad, that's fine too. I don't care which calculator you use. Yeah. Now here, here's a question. What if you took the same thumb circle, except we're going to roll it on the outside of the circle? Without slipping. And you keep on going. Can you imagine what that graph looks like? It's going to look something like this, yeah? You know what that's called? So the one on the inside is called a hypocycloid. The one on the outside is called a blank cycloid. Come on, who takes Latin? Is that Latin hypo? No, it's not hyper.
P cycloid. Epi cycloid. If you rolled it on the outside, inside sort of hypo. Come on, it's common knowledge, second grade. <laughs> okay, so we're not learning anything more. There's no, there's no more lectures already. This is it. Okay, you just gotta practice getting better at this. Some of you are still in the fog, right? Some of you are not even in the fog. You guys are still in your bedroom under the covers. You gotta come out and go to work. Now, you guys, okay, now I know there's guys in physics here now. An example of parametric equations. In fact, I might put this one on this year's test, I don't know. Look at physics people. This should look familiar to you. And you guys in physics next year, you just pounce on this. Pounce on it like it's a wounded wildebeest or something. <laughs> these equations, what are these equations? Zang, redeem yourself. You're in physics! And the seniors took physics already, right? Where did we see this before? Look, one half gt squared. Where? Come on. Oh, oh yeah, Lamari. Machina. And then the other person who's always silent. And then I don't know. This is projectile motion. Projectile motion is simply parametric equations. Okay, look, what happens when you plug in zero for t? You get zero, zero. The particle starts here. And then alpha is your launch angle. It's like you have a cannon, okay? You have a cannon. This is your launch angle alpha. And then V naught is your initial velocity. Let's say the cannon can shoot at like 1,000 feet per second. That's V naught. And so V naught cosine alpha and V naught sine alpha, those are like the x and the y components of the velocity, right? Again, see, velocity, and then you componentize. So if this is alpha, V naught cosine alpha, V naught sine alpha. Those are the x and y components of the velocity. Anyway, what happens when you launch a projectile? <laughs> what is the shape? guys in physics. It's a parabola. Anyway, look, if you were to solve for t in this equation and plug it into this equation, wouldn't you get like y equals something x squared? Which means it's going to be a parabola. So when your projectile is launched, it travels in the shape of a parabola. Now, this, is, this happened before, okay? I haven't done this for several years, but maybe we're going to bring it back. This problem was always on the test. Let's say you have a cannon that has an initial velocity of just make up something, 500 feet per second. Is that, is that fast? Anyway, so you have a cannon, okay? What angle should I aim the cannon at so that I hit a target whose coordinates are, just make up something, 1,000 comma 20. Okay, so I have a cannon that can shoot 500 feet per second. What angle should I aim it at so that it's gonna hit the target? Did you guys do these problems in physics? Yeah. How would you, okay, what if I just sprang this on you on the test? And then I'll say, let g equals 32 feet per second squared, right? So use 32 for g. You guys in chemistry, you don't know what that means yet. So just substitute 32 for g. What would you do? Well, where would I plug in the 500? Yeah, you're not know, there and there. And then what do I plug in for x and y? This, 1,000 points. So plug in 1,000 here, 20 there. Plug in 500 there. And then plug in 32 there. Solve for alpha. Okay, maybe I would. It's, it's, it's easy. It's easy. Okay, so this is what you do if you plug in all the numbers. You get 1,000 equals, what is it? 500. Uh, cosine alpha t, uh, 20 equals 500 sine alpha t minus 1 half times 16 t squared. So this is two equations, two variables. Just solve it, and I'll probably let you use a calculator. How would you do it? Okay, what if I let you use a calculator to solve this? What would you do? What would you do if I let you use a calculator? What are we solving for? Are we solving for T or alpha? We're trying to find the launch angle. 
So what you do is you solve for t in this equation, plug it in here, and how do you solve any equation on any calculator? You make one side zero and graph it, and wherever it crosses the x-axis, that's the answer. But you're gonna have two answers, because you guys in physics know, right? If you want to obliterate a target, you always have like one that's like a low trajectory, but then another one that's a high trajectory, right? Okay, so didn't kinematics come at the beginning of the course? But if you had a choice, which one would you pick? The, the smaller angle or the bigger angle? The smaller one, because the longer it stays in the air, then the more the wind can take, you know, can, can affect it. So you want it less time in the air. <laughs> okay, we are done. Okay, so tomorrow, uh, do I see you tomorrow or Thursday? So we're going to take the quiz, go over to Omar, and then we're going to watch Flatland. Because some of you still are easy on the three and four, four dimensions, yeah? You know, tonight's homework is just more practice. It's like, come on. So if you guys are catching on to this, that's good, because th this test doesn't have to be hard. It just turns out it is. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because uh, students just, I don't know. I don't want to know my trick identity. And we even did, we never even got the graphs with the vertical and the horizontal and slant asymptotes yet. Wait till you see those. <laughs> <laughs>